episode includes me, along with a featured guest on my globally recognized show, Paige Turner Studio with Corey. Hi, welcome to the very first episode of Paige Turner's Studio with Corey. I'm Corey Wamsley. I'm a content creator, CEO of Aurora Corealis Publishing, and nine times author. And I'm so excited to get started on this journey talking about books and their impact on the world. Today, we have a very special guest. This is Joey Garrity, and we're going to be talking about how to spotlight your book with visibility expert. Joey Garrity. So this is a really important thing for authors everywhere. So I'm going to bring her up from the green room and we'll get started. Hi, Joey. Hey, Corey. Hey. How are you? Good. How are you? Good, good, good. Good. Thank you for joining me here. Um, well, thank you for having me. <laughs> I kind of forgot to give your bio, so I'm going to go ahead and give it now. Okay. Um, Joey Garrity is the founder of Joey G113. She worked in the Hollywood entertainment industry for 15 plus years at top companies, film, television, um, original web content, brand branded entertainment. So she has been all over the place. Um, she is fantastic with knowing how to spotlight things, especially books. So we're really excited to have her here today. Hey, thank you. Thank you. Yes, I love, love myself. Uh, I love books. I, and I think becoming an author is like the most ultimate business card for women out there, women entrepreneurs. Yeah. Yeah. I totally agree with you. Um, it's, it's such a nice thing to have a physical product because, you know, business card, people go home, they toss that in the trash can, but if they buy your book, they're not yeah. going to throw that away. They're going to pass it around. They're going to keep it on their desk and hopefully they'll read it and get to know you better. I know. I mean, I, I take my books everywhere. Right. And yeah. so absolutely. They're not going to throw them out. You're absolutely right. I read an, I read an article about this, that it's a hundred percent guaranteed. Like it's minuscule, minuscule that someone would actually throw out your book. Yeah. They'll give it away. They might donate it, but who cares? Like if they donate, the right person is going to find it. Exactly. Um, I had someone ask me a couple of years ago, like, wouldn't you be embarrassed if some, if you were in like half price books, that's what we have in Pittsburgh and you saw your book on the shelf there. I was like, why would I be embarrassed? Someone decided they were done and they wanted to pass it on so someone else could find it. Like, yeah. that's easy. That's, I don't have to do my own advertising there. I would love it because, you know, mm -hmm. it, there's nothing, nothing cooler than when you walk into someone's home or, um, if you go into a store and you see your book there, yeah, like nothing lights you up faster than that, right? Oh yeah, yeah. So I would, I would take it as a huge compliment. I'm like, oh good, I'm gonna start encouraging everyone. I'm like, when you're done with my book, can you like donate it? <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, exactly. It's a great way to share that knowledge, pass it around, make sure other people who need it can get it. So books are fantastic. And I want to show um, a couple of your books here. So Joey has two books. She's an author of two books and I'm trying to find them. <laughs> um, I really love the covers. I love that um, the red carpet one, it looks almost like a retro Barbie sort of feel. I love that. And then of course you were on the cover for your second one, which is, I know this is a lot for some people. How did that feel for you? It was, I mean, I it was, it was um, one of the biggest stretches I've ever done in my life. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was intense. Right. And I love everything spotlight. And so I have my graphic designer. I, ha I use the same book cover graphic designer and she knows my style. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted to, with the first one, I won't, it's really about how like stepping on the red carpet and how that you know, and then it doubles as a guidebook. So it really has like social media marketing and you can just follow, follow my strategies, my techniques, but mm -hmm. I had her looking up and that was very purposeful. And so that, so rather than looking around and doing comparison that you look up to the divine and you ask for courage there. Mm -hmm. My second one, um, I'm doing more of a wonder woman pose there, a, a, a strength pose there, and I'm standing in my own spotlight. And so this is really an evolution I mean, going from, you know, with my first book, I mean, I, I I was freaking out all the time about it. My second book, I was absolutely freaking out. But putting myself on the cover forced me to stand in my own spotlight. And that stretched, stretched me both personally and professionally in the best of ways. 
Yeah, I love that. Um, and, you know, when you put out a book, you have at least your name on it. And then to put yourself on the cover, too. I know a lot of authors have this like moment where they have to stop and say, oh, my goodness, how much am I going to be out there? Because there's no way of confusing whose book this is. So I love that you did that. And you're showcasing like this is how you do it. Yeah, absolutely. And I just had um, another author on my show, spot, uh, a Spotlight. Um, superstar spotlight with Joey mm -hmm. and um, she her whole cover is um, like she's swimming up in this very very deep pool mm -hmm. and I was and she did it in real time she did it in in camera and I was like wow that is so cool so I have now set an intention that my next cover I'm going to do it in camera so I'll be on stage yeah. probably with a ton of spotlights and then um, whatever else I decide, I'll bring it like, you know, I'll do it in real time. So I'm excited. We'll see. I'm going to take a minute before my next book. though. <laughs> <laughs> I just dropped my last book in, at the very end of 2022 going in 2023. And so, you know, I love books. I blessings to them. Yeah. but I'll take a second. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. I think. uh everybody's different with that. I know some people, as soon as they finish the first one, they're like, I got to do the second one. Like right. it's, okay. I don't have any tattoos, but I've heard it's a lot like tattoos where you get one <laughs> and you're like, I got I to gotta do another one. <laughs> I believe that. Yeah. And I think it's, uh, I'm showing a picture here of several women with one of Joey's books. And I think that this is another piece that drives that is seeing people with your book and saying, Oh my goodness, they're excited about it. Now I'm excited. And, yeah, I'm gonna gonna do one more. <laughs> yeah, so Gina Estrada, she um, she passed uh, last year. Mm -hmm. uh, she had a book club that now another good friend of mine runs, and I'm I'm part of that book club. Um, but she wrote a book too. She wrote a book right before she passed, oh, wow. and um, bra and it's 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 genius. This book is absolutely genius, and it's all about um, you know steps you can take to be in for emotion, even when you're sick or going through a hard time. Mm -hmm. Right. And I asked her, I said, knowing, cause she knew she was sick already. I said, knowing mm -hmm. that you're sick and taking the time to do a book. Like I kind of was like, why? Like we know how, how cumbersome they are. And she's like, she's like, this is just another piece to the legacy. Right. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. So blessings to everyone that's doing books out there. Yeah. And I think for a lot of people, it's healing too. So to be able to focus on that piece, you get that, you know, everything that you're going through, getting it out there. I know plenty of people who at least journal when, when they're going through a tough time. So Very bravo cool. to her for working on that book. That's amazing. Yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah. So I wanted to talk about some of the shares that you gave me because these are just amazing. Um, so the first one here is our impactful page turner share. And Joey said, I was fortunate to work with leaders in the Hollywood entertainment industry. They taught me to embrace growing my influence both personally and professionally. So how did that reflect in your spotlighting of your book? I, you know, I, I, I th growing up, I, I always believed that people that were f only people that were famous Mm -hmm. right grew their influence that was a big belief system of mine right i think that's i think that that's can be pretty general globally in its own right mm -hmm. and when i got down there and the these masters that i was working for and running with they were like oh absolutely not like you have to grow your own influence and your influence has to transcend both personally and professionally and this really should be part of your, you know, like your purpose, in other words. And it still took me a long time to wrap my head around that. I remember walking down Hollywood Boulevard because I lived right, the last place I lived was right up the street from the Roosevelt Hotel. And I remember walking down Hollywood Boulevard and seeing all the stars, right, on yeah. the Boulevard. And I, rem I, I, no kidding, I remember thinking to myself going, gosh, I hope next time, if there is another lifetime, um, that that, you know, I'll be able to embrace this type of it factor. Again, and never one time, I still was having such a hard time stepping into it. Yeah. Right. Because frankly, um, we are very, very um, 
uh, brought up in community. In essence, a lot of times it's stay in the shadows. Yeah. It's, it's not encouraged necessarily, right? To step into your spotlight and step into a bigger spotlight and then, you know, shine super bright, right? Mm -hmm. um, that's, the, this is why I think bragging has, has a really got a bad rap, right? Yeah. My bosses were like, if we do not brag, if we do not talk about our accomplishments, how is anyone going to help us, right? And so I want everyone to do the same with their book. And, you know, and if bragging bothers you, just take that out of your vocabulary, the equation. But mm -hmm. instead, I feel that it's 100% being of service now. Because so every single day when I wake up, when I am talking about my books, when I am talking about my wins or my celebrations or spotlighting others or spotlighting me and all this crazy, right? Mm -hmm. All this crazy yumminess, right? Um, I feel very strongly that I am opening doors for other women entrepreneurs to do the same. Yeah, I agree with you on that. And you know, you're talking about bragging. And I think that's a problem everybody has where they, they start feeling like, oh, I, I can't really talk about this. You know, I don't want to come across as a bragger. And a lot of my authors, I had tell them to kind of shift that mindset. Like you're not talking about yourself. You're talking so you can help your audience, which you kind of touched on there. You know, you want to be of service. You want to make sure that those people that you who need to read your book are actually getting to see it. So if you're not saying, hey, I have a book on this. Um, nobody's going to know. So you have to do it. So I, I love that you shared this. Thank you. Uh, and I wanted to go to our next, um, our next tip from Joey, being a page turner tip. And this one is create a robust one year marketing campaign for your book that includes a minimum of three days a week dedicated to spotlighting your book. And yep. I love this because this moves from that brag into like, you know, actual momentum. So tell me, how did you, how did you do this for your books? Well, I know that there are women entrepreneurs out there right now that this is blowing their mind. The <laughs> thought of sharing <laughs> about themselves, <laughs> because yeah. essentially your book is just an extension of you, right? Yeah. Um, three times a week is like, no way. Um, <laughs> But what I want to say is that the marketplace is actually hungry for, um, there's a lot of, um, what is it like, um, looking through the glass, right? They're actually hungry for it. Mm -hmm. And I have, I just shared, I was just spotlighted in Ross Brand's book, 100 um, TV. It's all about digital influencers. Mm -hmm. And I, I literally, my, my trend, what my share is that we are going to be the new reality, real stars, anyone mm -hmm. that is willing to really embrace this digital world we're in. And I feel the same way about our books. Mm -hmm. You might be sick of your book because by the time you are done with your book, right? You are like, like you're exhausted. Oh yeah. Right? You're physically, spiritually, mentally exhausted, right? So yeah. what I say to people is that before your book is done, create your one-year marketing campaign. Make sure that there's three spotlights on your book, whether it's reviews, your shares, your journey. I don't care, right? Make sure that you share your book cover often, right? And and it keep you on task because there will be points where it'll be like, oh, no one cares anymore. That's not true, Corey. It's not true. Exactly. Of course they care. Of course, actually, they'll care more. They yeah. Care more. Yeah, definitely. Um, I, I think that sometimes people feel like they don't have enough stuff to talk about with their book. Like I talked about the whole book. I don't want to share the whole inside of the book. Well, mm -hmm. obviously, you know, you want people to go and buy it. Um, I love that you mentioned reviews because that is one of the easiest things. Like someone else is talking about your book. So you can easily do that. And I always tell my authors to go on their phone, look up their book on Amazon, pull up a good review, five stars. You want a five star one, right. <laughs> uh, pull up a good review and just screenshot it, share that. Like you didn't even have to do any typing. And yeah. you know, if you want to continue to not do typing, just hit the little microphone button and speak what you want to say about it. Oh my goodness, this was such a great review. I love what they said about this. This is exactly what I was trying to accomplish with my book. There's so many little like one liners that you can say that, you know, you have social proof. Here it is. It makes it super, super easy for people. That's a great tip, Corey. I'm going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> 
<laughs> it is. It's, a, it's such a great tip. And I tell you, yes, you know, again, women, you're going to have to dig a little deep, but I promise in the long run, it is a game changer. It's a game changer. There was, there was years that I was, I was making everyone else a star. That was kind of part of my job, right? In Hollywood, right? I mean, it oh. was, especially when I got to the last studio, that was absolutely my job, right? Yeah. And so that's, the, but you know, that's easy. That's easy. That's easy pumping everyone else up, right? That's mm-hmm. easy, right? Even though sometimes going to my bosses and trying to sell something wasn't always easy, but, right? But going in for other people, right? Mm-hmm. But the, the, the crossing, the true bridge, of becoming a superstar woman entrepreneur is when you can literally light yourself up, yeah. right? And that takes courage. That takes inner game. That takes, you know, support like Corey. That takes, you know, a whole community and a whole network, right, of other women, right, who are mm-hmm. like, we got your back, because because it, it's it's uneasy. It feels very uncomfortable because, again, we're not brought up to do it. Right. We're not. Right. And that's why we need to make sure we have that support, start building community. When you first are thinking about a book, start talking to people, let them know, get supporters. And pretty soon, you know, you'll, you're releasing your book and you've actually got a tribe. You've got people surrounding you. So, yeah, I, I love that. I think community is a, an underrated piece, definitely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so I want to share a tip. This is my make an impact tip with Corey. Always have a copy of your book with you just in case. I cannot tell you how many times I've been at an event and started talking about a book and had somebody say, oh, where can I get that? And I'm like, oh, I have one in my trunk. <laughs> I have one in my purse. Um, you know, oh, there's one right here. It makes it so easy because if someone else is asking, all you have to do is have the product right there, right? Yeah. You do that too, Joey? I do, you know, Corey, so whenever I travel, I do two things. One is I bring multiple books with me mm-hmm. to events. So when I find someone that I just, we're hit, we just hit it off, I'm like, I go up to my room, right? Mm-hmm. And I gift them a book. Yeah. Right. And it's created such deep personal, professional relationships for me that will be lifetime. Yeah. Another thing too I do is I leave uh, my book in, um, in the airport. Okay. So I either leave it on the seat or when I'm on the plane, I leave it in the, fr- in the front right there. Uh-huh. So anyone that sits down, right. And I, and I actually, I write a uh, note in the book. Oh, nice. This is my gift to you. Please share your gifts and talents with the rest of the world. I love you today, tomorrow and every day, Joey. Right. Aww. And so I do that. And the third thing that I do is I, when I'm in the um, terminals, as I go by all the bookstores and I leave mine right in front. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. With with the sign, with some, with the note inside too. Yeah. I love that. Um, Yeah. I've, I've actually left books in a few different places too. I know I left a copy of a book somewhere. um, Oh, we went, we went on vacation, like a family vacation. We rented a house. So it was one of those like Airbnb sort of things. And I left a copy of the book there beside, um, you know, all the random books that they had collected on the shelf, because I figure people are on vacation. They're going to want a copy of the book. Yeah. Um, here's, I'm going to show a couple of the most recent books I've done. There's my Braving the Shore book. So good. Unleashing Your Soul Level Magic. Thank you. So and, good. You know, I, I wanted to comment to um, the books, like we showed Joey's books with their gorgeous covers. And these are some of the books that Aurora Corialis puts out. Um, Braving the Shore is my personal book. And then Unleashing Your Soul Level Magic is a group book we did with 12 women. Um, when you see these covers, they draw you in. Yeah. So that's an important piece. Like when somebody sees Joey's book in the airport, they're not going to be like, oh, there's there's a book laying there. They're going to go, wow, what a cool book. What is this? And they'll pick it up and look at it. So make sure that that book cover is a piece of your marketing. You want it to speak to people. Um, I yeah, totally and, agree. And I love how yours, you can see the common thread, which yeah. is this heavenly, like, you know, above, like rise above on both of your covers are gorgeous. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of the books that we do are about uplifting people about, you know, reaching and reaching your higher self and talking to that, <laughs> that higher self and connecting more. 
Uh, so that's something that we do a lot of. And our cover designer is just phenomenal. I can brag about her all day. <laughs> um, but yeah, that is an important piece. And especially if you're, you know, if you're walking around carrying the book, I have another client who just carries her book with her and she'll be in a coffee shop and somebody will say, oh, what are you reading? Oh, this is actually my book. I'm in this book. So, you know, oh, when you see so that cool. cover, yeah, yeah. It's that's clever. That's very <laughs> clever. Yeah. Leave them in coffee shops. Listen. They are the ultimate business card. And when people are precious with their books, I'm like, why? Why? I'm yeah. like, you put all this time and energy and resources into it, right? Yeah. So I'm like, I was thinking the other day, I was walking by my local farmer's market, and I was thinking that I'm going to get a table, and I'm just going to give away my book for free at the yeah. local farmer's market. And I'm just going to start having conversations with my community and my neighbors and everyone <laughs> around the book and just and have some fun with it. Have fun. Yeah, that would be a lot of fun. Um, and I think most people, they don't realize like you can do farmers markets or you can do, you know, your local festivals and stuff that okay. like I've been to so many festivals where there are no authors. It's all craft people. And that's wonderful. Like you get to meet, you know, lots of local people who are creative, which is wonderful, but local authors, you can absolutely do festivals and oh, yeah. you know, set up a table be like, I'm going to be here for 20 minutes. Just sit outside of Panera or whatever. And be like, Hey, I'm giving away books. Stop by and get a book. Yeah. yeah. absolutely. It, and I, th I think sometimes people get hung up on like, Oh, you know, I, I don't want to give away all these books. Um, a lot of times a book costs like in the realm of $5 to print. So yeah. You know, if you're making an impact, you're making an impact. And also it comes back to you when you're serving, it comes back to you. So, so true. So true. Yeah. yeah. A lot of stuff to think about here. Um, I, I had another question for you because, you know, you're the expert on spotlighting your book. So what do you think is the most impactful way to get your book in front of other people? Well, what I did is I created an entire live show around it. So my, I have a show called Being Your Own Superstar. Huh. Show. And anyone, and I, I, some some people that came on the show never met them before. Mm -hmm. Anyone that reads my book, I invite them on online to grab a spot and come on my show. And it has been so much fun because not only is it like real testimonials, but I have learned so much because people are yeah. sharing about pieces of the book and their, um, you know, their, their, their feedback, their, their aspect or what's happened for them. And I'm like, Oh, you know, so you really get a different perspective, but yeah, I've created an, an entire show around the book. That is genius. I don't think that uh, I, I've talked to anyone else who's done that. So that's amazing. Yeah. It's been, it's been really fun. I'm about to do another marketing push and I'm just, and I'm telling people, I'm like, who's read the book. Yeah. I'm like, come on my show. I'm like, I'd love to have you on the show. You know, it's not easy to get on shows still. There's not a lot of shows still, mm -hmm. right? So people are like, what? I could come on your show. I'm like, yes, yeah. I want you to, right? <laughs> it's just, it's, it's, it's a lot of fun. But yeah, yeah. So I create a show. That's, that's one big piece I did with this particular show. But another piece that I did with my first book, um, The Red Carpet Guide to Visibility Influence, is I created an entire event around it. Mm -hmm. It wasn't a book signing event. I created an actual event, right? So I invited women entrepreneurs to come in and my, and I talked about this whole, about visibility was that what the whole event was about. Mm -hmm. And I was leveraging the book and really giving people insights from my strategies and my techniques. And I was showing them the guide that's inside and I was teaching them, was training them too. Mm -hmm. And we were having a lot of fun and threw a party and it was great. It was great. So yeah, throw an event. That's fun. I, I do always like um, author book signings and I love when there's something special about them. Um, I went to one recently for one of our author's books and because she's so theatrical and like that's the theme of the book. Um, this is for uh, Step Into Your Spotlight by Heidi Park Herner, uh, who I know you know. <laughs> Um, because of the the way we did the book, it was supposed to be sort of a theatrical sort of, sort of book. Um, she actually had a little show that we we went and watched, and I I drove up for her uh, for her book launch, and it was really fun. We had just like an hour of mix and mingle, and then we went in and saw this show she had where she was talking about the different pieces of her book and had different characters 
um, like personas from the book where people were being that specific type of person and being on stage and showing people what it's like. Uh, it really, it, it made the book come alive. It was incredibly cool. So I love the idea of doing book events and making sure that people really know like, hey, this is what I'm all about and I'm going to teach you along the way too. I think it was brilliant what she did. I think it was so brilliant, right? And she talks yeah. about in the book how when she was growing up, she was creating these little stage project produ productions. Plus yeah. she worked in Hollywood, you know, so did, as I did, right? Yeah. And so when I saw that she was doing that, I was like, oh, this is so genius. Mm -hmm. I was like, good for you, Heidi. She understands the nuances of really bringing the spotlight and then um, helping others to step into it. And then she pulled in her community to help put on the show. And I was like, oh, that's so yeah. good. It's so good. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. Yeah, definitely be creative when you're coming up with your book events. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Have, exactly. Have fun. Have fun. One of my, um, so Gina, when um, she had to be in the hospital often, um, mm -hmm. she literally, I was throwing her a book, a book event, a virtual one. That's another thing too, guys, do a virtual event, right? Do a Facebook invite or do an evite, like literally like just like blow it up. Mm -hmm. And um, so rather than cancel it, she's like, oh, I'm gonna do this. And so she, she was in the lobby, right? you know, reading passages, Q and a and this and that. And that's what I'm saying. It's part of the fabric. It's part of your fabric. Like be authentic. It was so, it was probably one of the most magical like times that I, we had together. Yeah. Right. Because she showed up anyways. Yeah. You know, so it's just, it's just, it's mind blowing what, what, how far you how far you go because your book is just it's just another piece of your essence. Yeah. Oh, I love that. So I, I want to ask too, because you are the spotlight expert here, what was your biggest challenge in marketing your books? Mm, my biggest challenge marketing my book was um me being on the cover. Okay. Because my old stories of like, no, that's for famous people. That's for, especially with that Hollywood background of mine, yeah. right? Um, so I had to lean into, again, going back to the purpose because this book was downloaded to me. I, I mean, not that all my friends are passing away, but <laughs> I mean, and I'm, I'm, we're fairly young too. So, but um, I was at a friend's life celebration and I just asked God, like, what was, the, what's life really all about? Right. Mm -hmm. And the real challenge for me, Corey, was that within seconds, they downloaded to me the real reason I worked in Hollywood, this book, a big part of my purpose, how I was supposed to bring this book to life. This all happened like boom. Mm -hmm. And the challenge was, is saying yes to the um, calling, wow. saying yes to the calling. And I think, I think that so, including myself, I think that I was driving by, I've driven by so, endless callings endless callings over the years. I was too busy. I was too distracted. I was too overwhelmed, you know, um, whatever it was. Right. Yeah. Um, and I remember leaving and still being on the fence about it and just saying, yeah, we'll see. And I said, you know what? I'll, I'll, I'll make a, a pact. Um, I said, I'll beta test this on myself. And I said, and if I see huge impact and huge change in my personal professional life, then I promise you, God, I will, I will publish this book. And literally within not a, and within a year, about six months to a year, my entire personal professional life changed overnight. It was, wow. it was like everything I've been asking for when I kept hitting that glass ceiling, the ceiling, like it started quieting itself. Yeah. And, and so year two, as I'm working on the book, then things were just popping bigger. So every time I wanted to put the book down, the divine was just like, okay, so we'll just, I guess we'll just have to show you again. Right. And so <laughs> yeah. I just, I, I know there's people out there that they've had a calling 
right? Yeah. I know. And I get it. I get it. It's a lot. It's a lot of responsibility to show up for these callings, right? But I'm so glad that I did. Yeah. Oh, wow. I got chills with that. That's amazing. Yeah. And I think a lot of us, we have that book that drops in and then you just kind of shove it away. You're like, shh, stop that. You're like, quiet. Not right now. Because we think, well, at least I thought that that was going to throw me off course. But guess what? Yeah. Guess what? I was off course. Yeah. <laughs> and that's the illusion. I was going in the back door, going in the back door, going in the back door. Right. And as this book started illuminating and started downloading and I was putting it into real time in the paper because it already was there. Right. Mm -hmm. What was so interesting about it was that my dad, he got sick very suddenly. And every, my whole world was upside down because anyone that has an adult parent that gets sick, right? You're going to be in the system. Plus we went into COVID within one month of that whole thing happening. So now I'm in COVID, my dad gets sick, but I'm still doing the practices and my business, what my business boomed, boomed. Wow. It was the best year to date. And I, so I had to really, I had to look at that. And again, it was that, but the magic behind all this and the timing was, is that I was able to read the dedication because I dedicated it to my dad, to my dad right before his passing. Oh, wow. And so I believe that that's why when we say yes to the calling in real time, mm -hmm. right, that the divine had this, had that plan. Yeah. Right. Cause my dad needed to hear that from me. Right. So anyways, I get so weepy about it. And lately I've been thinking about my dad so much, yeah. <laughs> you know, but anyways, back on a pot on a high note is this women, women entrepreneurs out there. Okay. I know y'all got a calling, right? I know you're sitting there saying you, you have a book, you want a book, there's a book, you know, coming down like you put a book down, right? You put it, pick it back up. Yeah. Best, best decision for your brand, for your, for your business, best decision. Yeah. Oh, I love that. That was, that was a wonderful thing to end with here. Um, yeah. So if you have a book, make sure that you are getting it out there to the world and spotlighting it. Um, all the great tips that Joey gave us today are going to help you so much. So thank you, Joey, for being with us today. And I'm going to drop you back to the green room. And I hope to see you again soon. Thank you. Love you, Love you Corey. Awesome. Well, that was an amazing episode. I'm so happy that we got to talk with Joey today. And I want you guys to join me again for another episode of Page Turner's Studio with Corey at 7 a.m. Pacific, 9 a.m. Central, where I'll be feature featuring other guests who talk about books and all the other pieces that help you be a page turner. So thank you so much for joining me.